All right, so buying a home or purchasing a lot or land that you plan to build your dream home on is an exciting process. At Farm Credit, we specialize in agriculture and rural living loans. So we wanna be your financing partner for your home and land. My name is Jana Bass, Marketing and Financial Services Manager at Cape Fear Farm Credit, which covers Southeastern North Carolina. And today we have a knowledgeable panel talking everything about home and land. So our panel team members consist of Ashley Such, Consumer Loan Officer for Cape Fear Farm Credit, which covers Southeastern North Carolina. Ashley, give everybody a wave. And then we have Amy Adcock, Branch Manager with Ag Carolina Farm Credit, which covers Eastern North Carolina. So Amy, give everybody a wave. And then lastly, we have Mindy Herman, Loan Officer with Carolina Farm Credit, uh -huh. which covers uh, Western North Carolina. So ladies, we're excited to have you here with us today just to talk everything home and land. So let's dive into some of the commonly asked questions when it comes to purchasing land for a consumer purpose. So to start, Mindy, I'll start with you. And so let's dive in. So when I'm searching for land, what happens after I find that right piece of, of property, right? So I'm buying land and let's first talk about, do I need a realtor or is there other routes that I can go? So let's start with that. If, if I need a realtor okay. when I'm going to purchase some land. Okay. Not necessarily, although realtors are often very knowledgeable on things like available properties or market trends. They can help you out with the negotiations, whether or not you may need home inspections and things like that, deciding you know, how long your due diligence period needs to be. Um, but we often do have customers who choose to either work with an attorney on their contract or maybe even write up a contract on their own. But Oftentimes, um, customers do choose to use a realtor just because it makes their process a lot smoother and easier um, just because the realtor does have that background knowledge and experience in, in the contracts and real estate in general. Great. So if I'm buying land, the land that I'm considering to purchase is currently in land use with the county. What does that mean and what do I need to do? So if property is classified as in land use with the county, that could be anything from timber land use or agricultural land use, which at the end of the day basically means that the landowner is getting a tax advantage when it comes to the property taxes. So if you're going to continue using that property for agricultural use or have it in a timber management plan, then you're going to be able to continue once you purchase that property to have it in land use and also reap the benefit of the, the tax advantages that comes along with that as far as property taxes go. Great. So I found this piece of property. Do I need to get an approval from farm credit before I make an offer? Or where does that, where do I need to get an approval in relation to when I make an offer on the property? Some people decide to go ahead and get a pre-qualification letter with farm credit prior to making an offer, just because some realtors and even some buyers feel that that makes their offer a little bit stronger when they're at the negotiation table with the seller just because that seller knows that you as a buyer have already been in contact with a bank and a lender. You're already looking to secure your financing and you're ready to roll. And so some people do choose to go ahead and have that just so they're ready to roll and that the seller knows that they're ready to go and make their offer just a little bit stronger. Great. Now what happens if the, the piece of land that I want to buy, let's say I plan to cut the trees for the property or it's located in a floodplain. How does that impact the property that I want to buy and, and what do I need to do? Okay, so if you're buying a piece of property and it has timber on it and you are wanting to cut the timber on it at a later time, you definitely need to be in touch with your lender on that because the timber that is on the property is considered part of the real estate and is considered as collateral on the loan. So if you were to purchase the property and at a later date choose to cut the timber, the timber would need to be released um, as there is would be a lien on it. And as far as the floodplain goes, if you were purchasing property and it was located in a flood zone and you were going to build a home or any type of structure on the property later, you would have to get flood insurance on the property. So um, there would just be additional insurance requirements. So that's something that you definitely need to think about, especially if you're planning on building a structure, any type of structure on the property that you're purchasing in the future. Great. So last question for our, our section on when I'm searching for land and some of those commonly asked questions there, let's talk about due diligence. What do I need to know about the due diligence process and timeline? Okay, the due diligence process is 
there and available for you to be able to check out the property or the home or whatever it is that you're buying and make sure that you have um, kind of uncovered everything that you want to look at whether it be a home action, you know, looking to see uh, the value of the timber if you're thinking about cutting the timber, just really taking the time and making sure that that property is going to be what you want it to be. That could include, you know, getting a perk test and making sure that the property is going to perk so that you can one day build on it. During that time period is the time period that the buyer would conduct any investigation, so to speak, that they want to on the property to make sure that that property is the one that they want to buy and that it meets their needs. Great. So Ashley, let's move to you now. So now that we have found that piece of property that we want to we want to buy, we've worked with a realtor or we worked with a seller directly. Um, we've done our due diligence period or we're in the process of doing that. Let's talk about the land loan process. So how do land loans work? You know, how much do I need to put down um, to talk about rates? What do I need to know about a land loan? Okay, so land loans work a lot like home loans, except they typically require a greater down payment and are placed on shorter terms. Um, and I would definitely say that while we're going to cover some of the basics today, if you're interested in a particular property or purchasing a piece of land, to contact your local farm credit branch to discuss their particular process, as it could vary um, from association to association. But um, while you know, and looking at down payments, what you have to put down. While down payment amounts can vary, farm credit or Cape Fear farm credit in particular can typically finance up to 75% of the purchase price of the property or the appraised value of the property, whichever is less. So the typical down payment is around 25%. Um, you may say, okay, well, that's a large down payment. Why? so much, but with lot loan financing, it's beneficial for the buyers to build and have equity in the property when they move to the next phase, which could be a construction loan phase. Um, there are also some risk associated with raw land financing, so the down payment helps to mitigate that risk for the financial entity. Absolutely. So when I'm talking to um, my lender and I'm exploring a land loan, how many years can I get a land loan for? You know, can I finance a land loan for 30 years like I can a home? So land loans cannot be financed or cannot have terms of 30 years like a home unless it's refinanced in connection with a home loan. Um, typically, lot loan terms are seven to 10 years. However, if purchasing a larger tract of land, term exceptions may be made on a case by case basis. Great, so that's just something that I need to talk through with my lender. Um, especially when I have the property and then what kind of use I want. I want for Absolutely. It. And then what information when I, when I go originally to talk to a potential lender, hopefully firm credit, right? What do I need to bring to the table or what do I want to talk to them about? Um, what kind of information do I need to bring? So we would need the basic property information, like the acreage, the parcel ID number. Um, we would likely pull it up on the GIS map to get a, an idea of where the location is to make sure that that falls into our um, eligibility requirements for financing the property. Um, we would require a completed loan application and then financial information to include tax returns, W-2s, bank statements, pay stubs, things of that nature. Great. And then let's talk about the property itself. You know, does it need to be surveyed? And let's talk about the appraisal process too. So farm credit does not require a survey for every land purchase transaction if a valid legal description is available. If a valid legal description is not available for the property that you're purchasing, or if you're purchasing a particular portion of a larger tract of land, a survey may be required at that point. Um, as far as the appraisal goes, once a pre-approval is received and um, a signed purchase contract is received, the appraisal or internal evaluation of the land can be ordered and completion times for the appraisal or the evaluation vary based on the current state of the market and the complexity of the property. Being purchased. Great. So I've, I've chatted with my lender and I've filled out, you know, all of my application, paperwork, everything else. Let's talk about closing. What do I need to know about closing on a land deal? Okay. So the borrowers have the right to choose an attorney of their preference. 
and that's generally decided in the beginning portion of the of the loan stage and then farm credit will send the loan and the property information to the attorney's office on behalf of the borrower engaging the attorney for the title search and the closing great so i have my land right i've worked with my loan officer and i've, I've closed on it and so amy now let's kind of shift gears and let's talk about um building a house whether i knew all along i wanted to build a house or you know i had this piece of land and down the road i decided i want to build a house so if i bought large acreage what is the process from going from that land loan to a construction home when i decide to build a house before i answer the question i have a tip a piece of advice so okay. people when we talk about uh, buying a large track and eventually they want to put a house on it often they have a plan and they have a timeline which is not immediate but i have found that people get so excited about buying their farm their dream farm their whatever that all of a sudden i've got to have my dream home on my dream farm so they often don't have the down payment ready for the construction portion of that process. So my tip is to manage your expectations and try to be patient and go back to your original plan when you started this process to start with. But now to answer the question, when you've bought the farm and you're starting to think about um, a home on the farm or the acreage, then you need to pick out your house plans, you need to talk to a few builders, uh, get your budget, get your plans together, walk your property, find your ideal home location, which hopefully is not down in the floodplain um, so that you don't have to purchase flood insurance, but just kind of do your homework, check out to make sure that everything is the way that you want it. And when you're ready, including having saved money for your down payment, then you apply for your rural home. And in that process, the land loan will get incorporated into the new home loan. Great. And that was going to be one of my questions. You know, what's the order of the process as far as when do I start the building plans and get price quotes and things like that? But it sounds like the um, customer needs to make sure they have their building plans and price quotes and everything in place before coming to talk to you about the loan. I think that that can be interchangeable. There are some people that want to start out, they have their dream home. They have, they've had their plans for 20 years. They have their builder picked out. They have everything ready. So now they want to talk about budget they may want to be um, talking, what's that monthly payment associated with it? Do I have to go the full 30 years? Can I have a shorter loan term? And if people are prepared and are at that point, then they can come to their lender and we can run a few scenarios and kind of drill down into what product would work best for them. But some people aren't ready. They haven't, they really don't know what their house plans are. So in that case, I think it's good to talk to a couple builders or go tour some homes um, and start talking to uh, other resources, including that builder, as far as what will it take to build this home. And builders can kind of nail down uh, what it would take, how much money, so on and so forth where to go get some plans made. Does the builder have an engineer in his company that can draw the plans? Are you buying plans from an external source? So in this case, I think this scenario can run a couple different ways and it's really the preference of the customer as to how they wanna start. Great, so you mentioned preparing, right? To, to build your home. Let's talk about that full evaluation test if I want to build a home. Where does that come in in the process and when does that need to be done? So soil evaluations are handled by the customer and they generally, um, when they buy, when they buy a lot, they move right away because not all lots have, um, most lots only have one house site. So the perk test needs to happen right at the purchase of the lot. But when you buy a farm, you generally have several potential home sites. 
So the, the PERC test can be done later on in a large parcel process, but they should contact their county environmental health department and schedule that test. Or some of my customers have hired uh, independent soil scientists to have the work done. Great. And then lastly, we, we touched on money down, right? Do I need to put more money down? Um, and you mentioned in your tip to make sure that you, you kind of know what that looks like. Talk through a little bit more about, you know, needing to put more money down for the construction process and what that could potentially look like for the customer. So all of us at Farm Credit have a required down payment. It varies, I think, a little bit by association to association, but I think generally we're looking for something in the neighborhood of 25%. So if you've had the down payment for the initial land purchase, and depending on how big that farm was, you may have wiped out your cash when you bought the farm. So as you're preparing to build your home, you'll need to be saving for the home construction portion of that loan aspect. And that will depend on whether you're gonna build a cabin or you're building a castle, whether you're building a modest home or a very, you know, a showstopper intricate home. But yes, customers should plan to, as soon as they buy their acreage, their farm, they should be saving money right away towards that home construction component. Great. Well, thank you, ladies. This was very informative, you know, just at a high level, though. What do I need to know when I start to buy land and then um, when I start thinking about a home and then even when I want to, to build a home? So now let's go into a rapid fire round. So I have a few questions for each of you, and I'm going to ask you um, the question. These are just kind of some random questions that we commonly get. Um, when it talks about home and land. And so I'm going to ask you each of these questions and just answer them as concisely as, you know, as, as possible. So Amy, I'm going to start with you. And this is more of a farm credit question. So does farm credit make personal loans and do they do debt consolidation? So my answer to this is it depends. Full-time farmers are eligible for any type of loan product. So we can make personal loans to a full-time farmer. As you move away from full-time farming, um, the personal loans becomes a little bit more of a challenge. But I think that I would also ask, what is the debt? Can the customer tell me what that debt was used for? And if it was for something like a home or farm improvements and they can document those, then it could be a possibility that farm credit can try to do some type of debt consolidation. Great. All right, Mindy, you're up. So in addition to rural living loans, farm credit, we're an ag lender. So what constitute as a farm? A farm is a place that produces and sells agricultural products. So that could be anything from crops to livestock, um, to uh, greenhouse production, to uh, vegetables and fruits. So basically any agricultural or horticultural commodity um, that you produce and then sell. Great. Amy? And at Carolina Farm Credit, Oh, sorry, Jana. Go ahead, Mindy. At Carolina Farm Credit, we, I don't know about the other associations, but we try to look at um, those farm plans having a net profit of at least $400 uh, whenever they're, they're turning in their farm plans for us. Great. Ashley or Amy, did y'all want to add anything to that question specifically? Okay. I'm good. Right, Amy, I'm going back to you real quick. Um, what is one tip you have? You already gave us one tip, you know, earlier. So I'm putting you on the spot for another one. But what's one tip you have about owning a large track of land? I actually have several, but if we have time to, it will come back around. But I, I think that it's probably more expensive and time consuming to own rural property than what people plan for. And that's just because there's so much more acreage to take care of. And that may be uh, pasture maintenance, uh, might have to bush hog, a lot more mowing, fence maintenance, uh, maintaining a long access driveway instead of a you know concrete driveway at your home you know on a lot. And some, especially if you bought something with pastures, you might have to have chemical and fertilizer applications. So I just think people need to do their homework 
it's more than just a dream. It's going to be work. And what worries me sometimes is people have a big dream about buying things, and I don't want it to become their nightmare. Give it by. All right, Ashley, I'm going to switch to you. So, I mean, this process in, in general can be quite overwhelming, right? You have all these different moving pieces and um, a lot of information that you need to provide or, or decide upon. So if a buyer feels overwhelmed when they're, when they're coming through this process, what resources or suggestions do you have? So if a buyer or a borrower is feeling overwhelmed at any point in time during the land loan process or the home loan process, any loan process in general, um, I would encourage them to contact their loan officer. Um, oftentimes, no matter how many ways we explain things, until you've gone through the process and until you live through it, you don't you don't understand truly how it works. So I, my tip would be to talk about your plan with your loan officer. Call and ask questions, ask questions, and ask more questions. Um, the more that we can be on the same page the more successful we can be in, in helping your dreams become a reality. But we're here to help and guide the borrowers from the beginning when they're looking for property to the end when they're closing on their dream property. So contact your loan officer if you feel overwhelmed. Also, I would say networking with neighbors and joining county associations may help borrowers um, stay connected with community and resources that are available to them. Thank you, Ashley. So Ashley, Amy, and Mindy, thank y'all for your time today. Um, each of you have provided a wonderful insight and information um, about individuals that are searching for land and then going to, to buy a home. Does anybody have any final, final words before I close us out? We're just all, right. all ready to help. <laughs> That's right. So as I mentioned earlier, the Farm Credit Associations of North Carolina we consist of three farm credits um, throughout the state. We have Ag Carolina, which covers the Eastern North Carolina. Cape Fear Farm Credit covers Southeastern North Carolina and Carolina Farm Credit, which covers the Western part of the state. But each of us specialize in agriculture and rural living loans. So as Amy mentioned, we are here to help and we wanna be your resource and just chat through what your financing dreams are. For more information about Farm Credit and to connect with the appropriate association and the loan officer, uh, visit farmcreditofnc.com. So again, thank you for joining us today. We hope you learned some tips and got some answers to some common questions that we hear uh, when it comes to land uh, buying and then also home construction. So we look forward to serving you soon.